Hi there, it's Ron again here from Vanock Berard Fleet Compound and I'm going to give you a little bit of a vehicle presentation. These are the types of vehicles that we'll be utilizing in the T3 service. First and foremost, I need to show you the fob. This particular fob has a lock, an unlock, as well as a hatch switch. Simple enough is to lock the vehicle, pressing the button twice, you'll hear the alarm or horn go off. If you press the unlock once, it will only unlock the driver's door. If you press the unlock twice, you'll have all the doors unlocked. Now the fob here has a hatch switch, which if you depress that, the actual hatch will open up. Nice and simple. This is a, an ease of access feature, so when we are going to uh, place luggage or have luggage placed into the vehicle, it's simple enough. One of the things I'd like to show you here is another one of the buttons that you can activate which will close the hatch and make it again ease of function. There is a, a rear view camera on this as well as if you just touch the handle it will open up the hatch again. Pressing the fob again can also close the hatch. Inside the vehicle, there is also a button that you can press to open and close the hatch. Once again, hi, this is Johnny here from Vanock, and I'm going to be going over the gas card and how to use the gas tank. To open the gas cap, simply press on it, it will release, open it up, twist off the gas cap, it's connected to a string so it won't fall down. When finished pumping the gas, put the gas cap back on and twist it into place. When closing it, push it down and press it in and it closes the gas cap once again. Now if you look inside the vehicle, you will notice there is no release to open the gas cap. So keep in mind, simply come outside and give it a press. Some of the features that you'll need to know in the interior of the vehicle are where the headlights are located. These are to be left on automatic at all times. When running the vehicle, the lights will dim and will turn on and off in dusk or dawn. Secondary is the high beams which are located on the uh, turn signal. Push forward to have the high beams stay on. Pull back if you just want them to flash. Located on the uh, turn signal is also the wiper blades as well as the wash for the uh, windshield wipers. Located on the door panel is all of the windows to raise and lower them, the power windows, as well as the adjustment for the mirrors. You have a navigation system so you can push on a particular mirror and adjust it as you see fit. The emergency brake is located where most vehicles have theirs. It is a push on and push off emergency brake. You push it on and to release it, you push it again and off it goes. The temperature control system is located on the center console. In order to adjust the temperature, you would push the red plus button or the blue minus button. This will adjust the temperature to suit your, your needs. There's also a fan raise and a fan lower. In order to utilize the defrost system, you'll press or depress the defrost button on the console. Now also at the temperature zone will be a rear defrost that can be activated as well. Also located on the console is the rear window defrost as well as the rear window wash or wipers. Beside the wipers is the personal heating control as well as the passenger seat heating control. There is another button that will activate the rear, rear hatch which is located on the right hand side of the lower portion of the console. When you've removed the defrost on the main console your passenger also has the ability for their own climate zone and they too can control the temperature in their area. One thing to be conscious of is you have a central information panel located on the dash of the vehicle. Should you not be able to locate the odometer, just press the button that looks like a road going into the distance located above or to the left of the emergency hazard lights and that will scroll you through to find the odometer reading. Located in the center of the console is the hazard lights as well. It's identified by the red triangle. 
Just depress that and your emergency lights will flash. These vehicles are equipped with OnStar navigation as well as emergency features. The OnStar button here, which is the circle with the on in it, will give you assistance with navigation. When you depress this button, a member of the OnStar program will contact you and ask you how they could assist you. In case of an emergency, depress the red button and OnStar will reply to you immediately. This way they'll send a first responder in order to deal with a medical emergency or other. Alrighty, thank you for that Ron. And next we will be going over seat options. First I'm going to show you the two-way, which is this button located here. It moves the seat backwards and it moves the seat forwards. It also moves the seat up and down. Behind the two-way we have another one that moves the back of the seat rest so you can adjust it to where you need for optimal use. Next to that we have the lumbar button which will sometimes be located on the right hand side of the seat depending on the vehicle you're in. Pressing that will give more support for the lumbar, pressing it will release support for the lumbar. And that is also the same options on the passenger side of the seat. Next I will be showing you how to operate the back seats. All of these vehicles are six to eight passenger vehicles, but all the back seats have the same three options. First, located on the bottom left hand side is a lever. Pull that out, it moves the seat backwards and forwards. Once the seat is all the way to the back, we have a rope here, pull that rope, it drops the seat down. Now you are able to put luggage into the back. Pull that rope again and lifts the seat right back up. Make sure it locks into place, give it a little tug, make sure it's locked. Next, pull on this lever at the top left hand side of the seat, pushes the seat forward and simply push it all the way to the front and now people are able to get into the back. Once your passenger is into the back, simply push the seat all the way back, make sure you hear it lock into place, push the seat down, and again, give it a little tug. Thanks, John. Located on the back of the vehicle as well as the front, in the upper left-hand corner of the windows, is your call sign. This particular vehicle is Charlie 1733. Now, carrying on with what Johnny was saying about loading people and luggage into the vehicle. In order to lower the back seats, what you will do is pull the handle forward, the headrest will fold forward and then just push the seat and it will fall forward. As well as the opposing side, which then again, of course, drops the headrest and push it forward. Now you have room for luggage. Having said that, luggage will only be picked up from the Vancouver International Airport. Typically, you won't have to worry about carrying any forms of luggage or heavy equipment. Now, from time to time, the client will have pre-organized the pickup for a child and a car seat. It's not your responsibility to hook up the car seat. However, there is an anchor located on the rear seat here in order for the client to take the appropriate measures to set that up. Also located in the rear of the vehicle is the safety equipment. Here you have the survival kit, should it be required, as well as a minor first aid kit. Also located is your brush and ice scraper. Hopefully we're going to need this soon. Located underneath the vehicle is your spare tire and the jack. We do not expect that you would have to change a tire we will be sending someone out should you need assistance. So thank you very much for enduring our presentation as droll as it may be. This is however to give you the information. Really, we're really good to get along with and you'll enjoy your time spent here with us. So from Ron and myself Johnny and Charlie1733 of course. Thanks very much.